what's good YouTube man, it's Gabriel, just another fan TV man, back at you another video, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe on all the videos man, how y'all doing, uh, it's been a couple days for sure, uh, but you know, have y'all had a great weekend, great Mother's Day weekend, spent time with the family, things like that, you know what I mean, so uh, those holidays are really important to me with my daughter and her mom, so um, you know, I love spending time with them, so it is what it is with that, so um, Ravens news has been kind of slow, right? Uh, you know, kind of in a slow period right now. Other teams are going through that had they, you know, Ricky Mini camp last week. Ravens been had that. There's some workouts going on. The Ravens aren't really back in the building for that just yet. So it's like some, it's kind of slow right now. Um, I guess Ravens related news, you know, with Marcus Peters having a visit with the Raiders, but it's just a visit. You know, he can visit multiple teams, you know, before he decides where to sign that or before he's off of the contract. You feel me? So um, also the Ravens signed a backup center, uh, Sam Mustafa. I believe that's how you say his last name. I could be wrong on that. Uh, from the Bears, he has like 40 career starts. Um, the Ravens lost Tristan Cologne to the Jets, so it makes sense to get a backup center on the roster that's not Patrick McCurry because I saw Justin Rebeck say this, right? It was it was, a, it was a, a sound thing that, to say, a smart thing to say. Is like Somebody was like, well, uh, isn't Patrick McCurry the backup center? Well, he's like, well, Patrick McCurry can't be the backup center and the backup left tackle. Like, you got to get other guys in the building. So that's true, right? We think of McCarry as somebody who can play all five positions, and he can, but he can't play all five positions at once. You know what I'm saying? So it makes sense for the Ravens to get another guy in there. Great. Um, Linderbaum, you know, hopefully he stays healthy. You know, we expect a lot from Linderbaum. So, you know, hopefully he's out there all 17 games plus the playoffs. All right, anyway, what I want to talk about this video is the fact that second year Ravens will really define this team and how far they go next year, right? So listen, I'm not going to talk about Hamilton, Linderbaum, and Likely because we know what ha Kyle Hamilton is going to have a big role next year. Uh, Tyler Linderbaum had a big role last year. We expect even more for him this year. Uh, Isaiah Likely, one of my favorite rookies last year, really my favorite rookie from last year. I think he'll step into a bigger role this year. I think the Ravens will do a lot of 11 personnel, but they will still find time to have 12 personnel on the field, get that two tight end look, and get Likely out there sometimes in the slot, sometimes, you know, in line. I think... Ty Munger's creativity will really unlock some of the things Isaiah Likely can do, right? Um, so those three guys, I think we all expect things from them, right? Um, but there's guys, so there's, there's four guys on defense, really one guy on the offense, but um, David Ojabo, Travis Jones, and then the two corners, uh, Jalen Armour, Davis, Pepe Williams. These guys are going to really help define what the Ravens are next year, all right? So David Ojabo, 45th overall pick, didn't really play last year, got a couple snaps here and there at the end of the year. Ended up getting a strip sack on Joe Burrow. That was a good sign of his potential of what he can be because we know he's the kind of guy he gets after the QB, and that's big, right? The Ravens right now, if we're looking at who they have at edge, we got to be honest. It's it's probably the weakest position they have on the team right now. With signing Rocket Sin, I feel a lot better at corner. They could probably still add one more veteran corner if they need to, but I feel a lot better at corner than I do at, at, at edge right now at this moment, okay? This... Just for the simple fact that they have proven plays out there at cornerback, okay? At edge, we're depending on can Odafe take that leap year three. We're depending on David Ojabo year two to take that leap. If David Ojabo takes that leap and gets eight to ten sacks, that's great. That's why I say we're depending on this guy to really become the player that we thought he could be, right? Um, so with Ojabo, I mean, listen, second round pick, you draft these guys to be starters. You know, second round picks. Really, your top 100 pick guys are guys who are, you know, eventually he will start for this team in some capacity. All right, for Ajabo, that's this season, right? If the Ravens don't make any other move at edge, which I find unlikely, you know, you could bring back a Justin Houston. You could uh, bring in um, Clowney, Leonard Floyd. It's, it's guys out there, pretty much is what I'm saying, right? Um, we know that Sedarius went to the Cleveland Browns, so that's somebody that's off the market. And we know, we know what happened with Sedarius Smith last year, so it's unlikely he's going to come back to the Ravens. So, anyway. Um, Ojabo is the guy that the Ravens are looking to take that leap. And if he doesn't, this sack production that we had, it's, it could take a, a massive hit, right? Say they don't bring back Justin Houston. That's nine and a half sacks. They, Calais Campbell is not here, right? So we're looking at guys like David Ojabo to take that major leap next year and help this team. Because, listen, man, we know that you can have all the great cornerback play you want. If you can't get to the QB, it's going to be a problem, right? Three, your, your cornerbacks have managed to hold up or are supposed to hold up three seconds, four seconds if it's great. If it's great coverage, four seconds. So anything longer than that, QB gets any more time than that, you're in trouble. Um, so the next guy is uh, Travis Jones, right? 
So Travis Jones is a guy who I was really looking forward to last year. And then he kind of gets hurt in the preseason versus Arizona. That kind of derails things for him a little bit because before that, he was looking dominant. Tennessee and even in that Arizona game, he was looking really, really good. Um, and they kind of just kind of got brought, brought along slowly after that. So with Travis Jones, it's like Calais Campbell is gone. But I feel like this is the kind of guy we're talking about that could be that kind of replacement for Calais Campbell, right? And I know we got um, Matt Abike. I know we got uh, Michael Pierce. I, I, I do know that. But it's just the simple fact that Travis Jones is a space eater in the middle. And he also is an interior defensive lineman who is known for his pass rush. That was the biggest thing about Travis Jones. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I know he went 76 overall in the third round. But... That's why he was getting a lot of uh, second-round buzz. Honestly, and most people were shocked he went in the third round. He was getting a lot of second-round buzz because he was so freaky in the middle um, causing pass rush. That sounded crazy. <laughs> anyway, but causing pass rush um, up, the, up the gut, right? So Travis Jones needs to take a big step this year. The Ravens are dependent on Travis Jones to be a guy who can provide interior pass rush alongside uh, Justin Matabike, right? Listen, I know what Michael Pierce did in Minnesota. He became a better pass rusher in Minnesota. Um, but I don't know how much we'll get of that here, right? You know, we got to see a transfer over. But unfortunately for Michael Pierce, he got hurt before he could even really do anything for us last season. So we don't know what he has um, left, right? Um, we saw, I saw him at the... Um, at the rookie mini camp thing, you know, some of the some of the veterans came in. He looked in great shape. So hopefully we can get a lot out of Michael Pierce, but we just don't know. Right. Uh, so Travis Jones could be that guy down the middle who's going to give the Ravens that interior pass rush. Because, listen, man, one thing a quarterback does not want is to be pressured up the middle. They don't want that. If they get pressured around the edges. Right. Say Ojabo or Dave coming off the edge. They can step up into the pocket. Right. They can step up. Let those guys go around them. You know, it's a lane right there. Travis Jones straight down the middle is nowhere to go. If he if he tries to run out to the outside, Ojabo and 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 Odafe going to chase him down, right? So if Ravens really want to have an effective pass rush, they need Travis Jones to be able to push the pocket up the middle. And I think he can do it. It's just the fact that you know we haven't really seen it consistently, right? We saw it in the preseason, but like I said, you know he kind of got derailed a little bit because of that injury. And then you know the Ravens slow play a lot of their rookies. That's just how the Ravens are, right? It's how they always operated especially at least under john harbaugh that's how they always operated so um now as far as Jalen armor davis and pepe williams i talked about feeling better with the cornerback room right but um if they don't sign anybody they're going to depend on these second year guys to step up and really play well right uh so you got marlon you got rockerson after that uh they said brandon Stevens is going to be focusing more on safety this year i'm sure he'll still play corner some but they say he'll be focusing more on safety this year so you're really looking at Trayvon Mullen, who I really never brought up in these videos because I'm not sure he's going to make the team. I mean, just be quite honest with you. I mean, he could make the team, very well could, but I never saw the point of bringing him up because uh, I, used to, I, I forgot he was on the team one. You know, no, no offense to him. I know he's Lamar Jackson's cousin, uh, but that ain't going to help him make the team if he ain't playing well, right? So you got other guys like Trayvon Mullen, Kevon Seymour, who's a special teams guy. So if we're really looking at, looking at who corners are on the Ravens who are going to be on the team next year, right, depending on to make an impact, you're looking at Marlon Humphrey. You're looking at Rocky Sin. And then after that, as of right now, I throw in Jalen Armour Davis and I throw in Pepe Williams, right? Last year, I liked what I saw in Pepe Williams. He was tough, physical in the slot. He's a smaller guy. He ain't a big dude, but he shows the willingness to get throw his body in there and make a tackle, throw his body in there and, and challenge receivers in the middle, right? Now, he's a rookie. He got burnt with some plays that happens, right? But I feel like Pepe Williams did enough last year that I'm encouraged about what he can be this season. Um, Jalen Armour Davis is the one that's a little, um, I guess, up in the air a little bit, right? Because we don't really know what he is. So um, he had a very, very bad game versus the Patriots. Very, very bad. Um, I believe it was Devontae Parker went off, went crazy against him. And uh, it just wasn't good, right? Now, after that, he kind of had like a hip injury kind of thing. And then that was it for a season. You know, he, he was kind of healthy scratched and things like that. It seemed like he was in John Harbaugh's doghouse. It could it could have been the injury. It could have been just letting him recover. But it seemed like the Ravens were like, well, we can't trust you to be out here right now. So red shirt the rest of this year. That's what it seemed like. Could be wrong, but that's just what it seemed like. So you're, you're dependent on Jalen Armour Davis and Pepe Williams to take huge steps next year and be your third cornerbacks. That's how I'm counting them right now. I'm counting them as your third cornerbacks, right? 
one of those two guys. Now, obviously, they drafted Caillou, Blue Kelly, uh, who obviously he will compete for that role as well. I like him as a rookie. Um, I think he, you know, he could do some things. We'll see what he could do, right? But like I said, the Ravens slow play their rookies. He might not even get that much time on the field. He was a fifth round draft pick. So we can't say, oh, yeah, he's the third guy. We can't say that. He was drafted in the fifth round. We don't know that. But we know that Pepe Williams and Jalen Armour Davis have a year in the system. They played in the system. And to me, Pepe played well. So the Ravens have a really, really talented roster, right? They do. But they're dependent on key second round players to really help them take them over the top and define this team, right? Another guy, last guy I mentioned is Dan Falele, right? Real quick. The left guard position to me is wide open. I know a lot of people right now are penciling in Ben Cleveland, but Cleveland was supposed to win the job last year. And who he losing to? Ben Powers, who just got paid, and now he's with the Denver Broncos. So there's no... Um, and the Ravens have got, got some veteran offensive linemen as well who also compete. I think uh, John Simpson and things like that. So, But there's no way that you can say Ben Cleveland is the odds-on favorite just to win left guard spot. It's up in the, it's up in the air. Philly could fill in. Philly played well um, outside of tackle. Maybe they pick a drive at guard, have a really big lineup. You never know. Uh, but look, the main point is this, right? The Ravens are, like I said, a talented team, a good roster, a really well-constructed roster as, as it stands right now. Could add a corner, could add, add, add a rusher, could add a couple of things. But if they don't do that, they're dependent on these second-year guys to take major leaps. And if they don't, it could drastically affect the Ravens' season. And if they do, we're looking at a team that's going to be dangerous all around. So that's my thoughts on it, man. Give me you guys' thoughts on it. But, uh, you know, I'm glad to do these videos again. And, you know, I always enjoy doing these videos. So don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, especially if you're new. And, um, yeah, it's Gabriel. Just another fan TV. I'm out.